All right. So with this session, we're talking about specifically arts and science um, at St. Peter's College. But uh, I'm kind of breaking that down more on like the Bachelor of Arts aspect of things. Um, I've just because I've talked about the Bachelor of Science a little bit in some of the previous uh, little info sessions that we've done here, but I will I will briefly touch on them as well. If you do have any questions, feel free to type that into the Q and A there, and I'd be happy to answer anything that you might have. Um. <clears throat> So jumping right into it, this is kind of the agenda here. Uh, it's introduction. It's you know why students choose these programs. Uh, it's co it's common careers, common skills that you get from these. Um, you know what what's something to know about the first year? What's something to know about the later years? Uh, then like tuition, prerequisites, deadlines, so on and so forth. So. Starting out, I'll talk about myself. My name is Matthew Washkowski. I am part of the student services team at St. Peter's College, along with Crystal Shutko. We work with students to begin their USAS degree. And as such, we do work with USAS regularly to ensure you are transitioning properly and that you are set up for success. Uh, we are affiliated with the University of Saskatchewan, <clears throat> but we are not an official represent representative of the College of Arts and Science. So just so you're aware about that. Um, whether you're planning on going to St. Peter's College or USASC, we are happy to help you out with uh, help you out with anything because, like I said, we, we do work quite closely with them. Um, like I said, we're primarily going to be talking here about arts and science. Um, arts and science has a bunch of different options here. There's a Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Fine Arts. There's a Bachelor of Arts and Science. There's a Bachelor of Science, um, and then a certificate in minors. There's music. Uh, so there's quite a few things here to kind of look into. Um, what I'm primarily going to be focusing on, and again, I will touch on the other stuff here, but I'll primarily be focusing on is the Bachelor of Arts and Bachelor of Fine Arts, um, because it's a pretty overwhelming topic to begin with. Arts and Science has like 80 or 90 different programs within them. Um, so when we look at uh, humanities, social sciences, and the fine arts, <clears throat> you're going to see stuff like these. This is primarily the list of a lot of the different programs that they offer here. So it's quite overwhelming. Um, and so I'm not gonna be able to brief, I'm not gonna be able to touch upon every single one here. Uh, so that's why I'm trying to target some key themes here. That's why I've split it up into humanities, social sciences uh, and the fine arts. And like I said, I'll talk about the sciences as well. In fact, I think I'll just do that right now while I have the list up here. Uh, when it comes to the Bachelor of Sciences here. Um, you see most of your options there. Uh, one thing I will say is that, um, and this is true for both arts and arts and uh, for both arts and sciences or arts and science, you don't need to know exactly what you want to do right when you jump into it. Um, that's fine. It's a very diverse college. There's lots of different options that you can go into. I'll talk about that a little bit later. I'll give you some extra context on that. <clears throat> so jumping right into the fine arts here. So when we're talking about the fine arts, um, we're talking about stuff like drama, painting, there's drawing, there's photography, sculpting, digital imagery, art history, um, <clears throat> and more. So there's, again, pretty diverse field here. Uh, St. Peter's College is pretty well known for its liberal, liberal arts. Um, that was what it was kind of founded upon. And we're still one of the last remaining few people who are regularly offering these classes. We, uh, people, anyone who loves art typically comes to St. Peter's College because uh, we have great instructors in lots of different classes. Um, why students kind of choose this pro these programs specifically? Um, We'll be talking about the careers and the skills aspect of it, but something that um, a lot of people have, you know, every, everyone's heard the stereotype. Oh, why are you studying that? You're going to go and work at, you know, you're going to go work at Starbucks or something like that. Well, that's actually not quite true. Again, I'll be talking off on some of the skills here, but <clears throat> um, why people do it is you get a lot of hands-on experience, you know, preferably, I'm, I'm assuming it's something that you actually enjoy doing if you're in one of these programs. Um, there are small class sizes and, and that's going to be true for all of the bachelor's of arts programs um and there's some great studios so you have the option to really work with um great professionals in great areas whether here or at usask um you can pursue some in-demand skills there are definitely some things you're going to get out of this that employers are really looking for and within saskatchewan specifically there really is becoming a much more emergent arts culture um it's becoming much more pronounced in uh, of course the big cities but even some of the smaller cities now they're really starting to focus and delve more into that right now <clears throat> Going on to some common careers and skills here. Um, what I've listed to the right here is just a list of some common careers. It's not the it's not the full list. It is not the full list at all. Um, but just so you're aware about that. 
the fine arts does provide a lot of really great skills. Um, you know, being comfortable with presenting something, um, you know, knowing how lighting works, how colors contrast, uh, you know, how to digitally edit something, um, how to take a, a photograph, how to analyze something, you know, being creative, um, you know, drawing inspiration from things. Those are actually, um, those are pretty big. Those are pretty important skills. Um, a lot of people in the fine arts actually find themselves working in, in corporate uh, much more than you might think because you're really able to um, specifically market and, and work with a marketing team quite well. You know, is it likely that every single person is going to become a big league, a big league artist, a big league actor, uh, and a big league musician? Well, no, no. It, it typically tends to be a side gig, something they do for enjoyment. Um, some people do make it their full-time career, but that's not always the case. But you do gain a lot of in-demand skills, especially in digital uh, media and social media. <clears throat> and I, I, we'll be talking about minors a little bit later here as well, and like certificates, but you, you really can get that opportunity to customize uh, your education quite a bit here uh, to make sure you find something that, you know, you want to make, make sure you're enjoying your time, but you also want to make sure you're trying to find a, a skill set and a career that works for you. Um, going into the humanities here. So again, why do people study them? Well, I've, I've kind of shown a list up here, like there's the languages, literature, philosophy, history, archaeology, anthropology. Those are actually science degrees with the University of Saskatchewan, just so you're aware. They focus more on the science aspect of it. Uh, there's human geography, law, politics, religion. Um, again, these do offer some really in-demand skills. Um, both, social, both the social sciences and the humanities offer some in-demand skills here. Um, <clears throat> So there's a, there's a list of common jobs here. Uh, let me just load this up. Oops. Yes, here we go. So there's, there's a list of common jobs here. Um, the humanities does provide you with so many skills. There's a reason that lots of teachers, uh, lawyers, politicians, like doctors, um, you know, public figures that are very well versed in this area. Um, you learn how to communicate, you know, you're going to learn how to like read quickly and effectively, how to, how to think critically, how to problem solve, attention to detail, ethical standards, global perspectives, um, like cultural awareness, organization, teamwork, and consensus building. You know, those are all really big skills that employers are looking for. Um, when you're going into a Bachelor of Arts degree um, or a Bachelor of Fine Arts degree, very rarely, you know, if you, if you take a this, you're not going to become a thisologist. Um, you know, it's not like nursing where, oh, I studied nursing, now I'm a nurse. Oh, it's not like education where, I, oh, I studied education, now I'm a teacher. It's a very diverse field here. Um, and it all depends on like the skills you cultivate and how well you, uh, you sell yourself. If you look at any job description, that's something you're interested in, you know, go on SAS jobs, look at a job description that you think you're interested in, look at, you know, some of the recommended skills and requirements that they have. <clears throat> um, odds are that these skills are going to be pretty clearly listed as required criteria. So like all of those things I just read off, those are gonna be probably uh, required criteria. So those, are, you can really make sure that you get set yourself up well for a career. Uh, it just might in, in require you to kind of look into the different options that are out there. Again, you know, people who study history, for example, well, they're probably not going to become a historian. Um, they'll probably do something else that uses a lot of those, those great skills that they've learned. Um, a big reason that large organizations are hiring people of diverse backgrounds is for their different worldviews and their different perspectives. By studying the humanities, by studying the social sciences, by studying the fine arts, you're getting a lot of those different perspectives that can be very uh, valuable to a team. Going into the social uh, sciences here. So this is stuff like the economics, it's law, it's political studies, psychology, sociology. Um, psychology as well has both an arts and a science degree. So you have two different options there. Uh, the arts one deals more with like the uh, the people aspect of it, whereas the science one deals more with like the, the brain. Like, you know, what are the changes that the brain's undergoing? <clears throat> Again, similar to the humanities, it, there's a lot of in-demand skills we'll get. It's very flexible um, and it's a very diverse field. Again, just some common uh, jobs here. It's not all of them, but it's just some common ones. Um, you know, when... when when they, you know, they always do these polls every year, all these magazines, all these different universities, um, and they're all these, I guess, like media companies, they're looking at top skills that employers are looking for. And typically you'll find like these 10 tend to be among the top. Uh, there's like uh, data literacy, critical thinking, being able to communicate, tech savviness, flexibility, creativity, um, you know, emotional intelligence, uh, cultural intelligence, 
um, leadership, deci decision making, collaboration, persuasion, communication. Those are all really important skills. Those are the in-demand ones that they're looking for. So when you go through uh, the College of Arts and Science, um, you're getting a lot of knowledge, but you're also getting a lot of soft skills is what they call what they're called. So like, you know, being able to communicate, um, you know, being able to think critically, those are soft skills, being able to, uh, you know, like synthesize some type of a chemical, like with a chemistry degree, that's a hard skill. So that's where a big difference is. So the more you're able to uh, persuade someone that you have a lot of these soft skills, uh, you will be much more likely to get a really great career. That's something that you want for sure. <clears throat> um, and, and again, you learn a lot of these great skills uh, in here. So going on to what to know in your first year. Um, with arts and science specifically, this is true for both science and art. Uh, it's a very flexible year. So you can... Uh, you have a lot of flexibility. They designed this because about 60% of post-secondary students, they've changed their program than the one that they started in. This is especially true in arts and science. It's a very diverse, um, it's a very diverse field. So they kind of start you off with like some of the basics. So you take a little bit of everything for your first year. Uh, you get a really good foundation. And then once you get into your second and third and fourth years, you really dive into like, I call it the meat and potatoes. Like, so instead, let's say psychology. Uh, in, in your first year, you might take two or three psychology classes out of 10. And your second year, that's looking more like seven or eight different classes now. So that's when you really jumped into it. Um, the first year is designed so that it's quite transferable and you get that solid foundation so that you can build and grow upon. <clears throat> um, Something that's really beneficial, but especially here, um, students really enjoy this here, but um, at USAS as well, is you get to study with other majors in your first year as an arts and science student. So if you're in an English class, you might have people there who are like, you know, oh, I'm pre-med. You might have someone there who's, I wanna be a lawyer. You have someone there who's like, oh, I wanna be a chemist, someone who wants to be a teacher and so forth. Uh, someone who's like in business, for example. So you get a lot of different options there. A um, lot of different perspectives there. So students typically find that to be quite helpful in figuring out what they want to do if they are undecided, which is fine. It, it's common. So, you know, if you're unsure, don't worry too much. You'll get taken care of. Um, I really recommend that you do join a club either here or at uh, the University of Saskatchewan. Um, one of the biggest things I found specifically with first year arts and science students, especially in the arts area, is they don't know what to take. Um, and that's kind of true. Like if you go down the cereal aisle, you can buy one box of cereal and there's 500 different kinds, you might have trouble deciding. So that's where an advisor, um, either here or at USAS will be really beneficial to you. Um, you definitely want to take classes that you're interested in. So you'll, you will need to do some research here, look at all the options and figure out which ones you're the most interested in. Don't just ask someone, oh, what's an easy class? What should I take? Because again, there's hundreds of different options. <clears throat> Um, one thing I do recommend is pretty much in any degree you take, you will have to take some type of a science, some type of a math, some type of an English. Um, some people don't mind those. Some people are like, oh, I hate science. Some people are like, oh, I hate English. Some people are like, oh, I hate math. Um, you do have to check those boxes eventually. I recommend, especially if you're coming out of high school, get it done early. Just do it. Get it over with while the knowledge from high school is still fresh in your head. Um, and well, you have those great supports available to you, especially, especially here, because our class sizes are so small. So that kind of makes it a little bit easier with picking your classes. You know, you, you want to take a mix between classes you're going to enjoy, classes you have to take, um, and then classes you don't uh, want to take but have to take. Um, <clears throat> going on to high school classes here, again, 60% of people change their major. Um, we'll be going into the admission requirements here pretty quickly, but I... You, you've heard of this all the time. This is especially true. Take as many sciences, take as many maths as you can while you're in high school. I have seen so many students who are thinking, oh, I'm going to go and study this, change their mind six months or a year later, and they don't have the requirements. It does happen. It is extremely common. You might think it's not going to happen to you, but well, everyone who did that didn't think it was going to happen to them. Um, and something to really think about here, uh, when you go through your first year of university in arts and science, when you get out of the, that first year, you need a 56% average. <clears throat> so what that means is um, you could technically pass all your classes. Let's say you get like a 52%. Um, you could still face some academic consequences. So it's not like high school. A 50% is not, you know, the bar anymore. You want to aim higher than that. Going on to years two, three, and four. Um, this is also true for year one. 
but you want to make sure you try and get involved in research experiences. USASC is really um, investing heavily into research experiences. So you have a lot of opportunities to kind of grow your portfolio and pursue something that you're interested in and work with a professor. That can be really helpful in um, <clears throat> engaging in your field, figuring out what you want to do and building your resume. Um, there are international experiences for the majority, if not all the degrees that I listed earlier there. Um, so if you want to study internationally, you absolutely can. You typically won't be able to do this until your third year. But if you're thinking about it, if you think you might be interested in it, you have to actually start looking into this at the start of your second year because it takes time to apply. It takes time to get the documents. It takes time to formulate that plan. So you want to look into that in your second year if possible. Um, you do need to declare your major by your second year. <clears throat> Uh, or rather you should, you can do it in your first year as well, but there's not much of a point doing it in your first year unless you're going into the biomedical sciences, to be honest with you, because so many people change it. So don't stress too much about that. Once you get to your second year, <clears throat> you've made it past first year. Congratulations. You've passed. You figured out what you want to do. You have a much better idea what you want to do. Now you should be looking at those minors and certificates. There are like 20 or 30 different minors and certificates you can take, whether you want to like, you know, uh, you know, get a, get a certificate in business, whether you want to look into like justice studies as some type of a minor, um, you know, you're looking into nutrition or something. There's a, there's a ton of different options there. Again, arts and science offers 80 disciplines. The vast majority of them can be taken as a minor or a certificate. Arts and science degrees have something called electives built into them. They have a lot of electives usually built into them. Those are classes with some exceptions. You can kind of take whatever you want in. So you could just take classes you're interested in um, you know, graduate with your, with your degree. Um, some people do choose to, I want to pursue some type of, a uh, other, other area with this, whether that's because I'm looking into becoming like a doctor or some type of a non-direct entry college. They want to pursue school after they get their degree. Um, or it's because they're looking at stuff that I think this will help me find a job. So you'll want to look into those once you get into your first year, if not even the end of your, uh, at the end of your first year or upon entry to your second year. Stay involved. Again, lots of clubs, lots of opportunities to meet people. Make sure you get into there and just market yourself. Uh, USASC has uh, a great resume uh, building department, I, I guess. Like they have a service there that helps uh, build, build, um, build your resume. It helps look at like employment opportunities for you. It's the employment center there. Um, again, the entire point of arts and science here is you're getting these great skills. Well, skills aren't very helpful if you're not able to really make sure you market yourself, make yourself desirable by employers. And so that does require a little bit of practice here and a little bit of thought put into it. So if you can do that early, you will greatly benefit yourself. Going on to some of the required classes here. Uh, for arts and science here, um, technically, th this is different for every single program. You technically, though, the baseline is you do need a math. You need some type of a, a grade 12 math. So like foundations 30 or pre-calc 30, something like that. Um, I will definitely say this though. Um, and I said this before, take as many maths and sciences as you can because so many people change their mind. Um, physics especially seems to be a common one that burns a lot of people that like, oh, I didn't think I'd need that. Well, actually you do. So, you know, take your, take your biology, take your chemistry, take your math, preferably calculus 30 if you can get it, but, you know, pursue what you're interested in. Um, cause it will probably help you at some point later down the road, because at some point you have to take a science, you have to take a math, you have to take an English while in university. Going on to some of the important dates here. Uh, oops. If you're not already aware, um, there's the best and brightest scholarships. That's your full ride. That is your full ride. You win one of those. Congratulations. You're graduating debt-free. Um, you do need to be having uh, mid 90s averages to be considered for these, though, just so you're aware. I'll show you the how they calculate your average a little bit quickly after. Um, there are some admission deadlines here that you can kind of see. Arts and science specifically is until August 15th. So you can apply essentially last minute if you want, but it tends to be a little bit easier to do uh, to do that a little bit earlier. One thing I will say, um, especially if you're, like, you're you know concerned, like, I don't know if I'll be a strong student or not. Technically, the school year starts in September. Uh, you can actually start your year in May or July. So if you're a high school student right now, you want to get started early, you want to get adjusted to university, you could start your university actually a little bit earlier. All it takes is, you know, a quick email to someone on the main campus 
Um, and you could start some type of a class in your summertime here. Students find that really beneficial. We offer the accelerated uh, scholarship program here. People who start a university class early do way, way better uh, when they jump into their first year um, because they just know, they understand you know, what university is gonna be like. They understand the rigor there. Going on to the tuition here. <clears throat> Um, what you see here, first off, this, this will change drastically depending on what you take and how many classes you take and when you take them. This is an estimate, assuming you're taking the max number of classes you can take. Uh, if you're in like a Bachelor of Arts degree, you can expect that arts and science temper to go down a little bit. If you're in something like a, a science degree, you can probably expect that to go up a little bit. Uh, at St. Peter's College, the tuition's basically the same. I think it's like a couple percent points cheaper. So I don't know, go to Boston Pizza, buy a burger, and you have the exact same um, exact same tuition as you would have had uh, elsewhere. The biggest difference, though, is that our tuition is quite lower. Uh, it's about a third of the cost of the University of Saskatchewan, which just makes sense. You know, we don't offer a bus plan. We don't have a student newspaper. So that's why those fees are just lower. Um, students, we, what we find at St. Peter's is students do complete their first two years here. Uh, they do leave with less debt than other students within the province, which makes sense if the tuition's uh, the same, the fees are cheaper, and you get additional scholarship pool. We have, you can double your scholarship pool if you're a St. Pete student. You also get to keep all your USAS classes, plus you get ours on top of that, which is really huge because on average, for every student that applies for our scholarships, there's $1,800 available for them. So um, if Again, that's, that's just the average there. We don't know why so many of our students just don't apply for our scholarships and it's basically guaranteed money if you do. Um, why do people like choosing St. Peter's College? You know, just a little bit of a plug here about St. Pete's. Um, really small in-person classes. We have an average class size of around 15, 16 people. Um, just to give you some context there, it's actually so small that we're actually, we're actually opened up in COVID, one of the only institutions to be able to do so. And we haven't had a case of COVID because again, small class sizes, giant classroom, everyone's spaced out the way they need to be spaced out. There's all those great scholarships, you know, it's a friendly environment, you, you help every step of the way. Um, USAS does help you out as well. Like they really care about you. The biggest difference there though, is that, you know, because you're coming in with, I don't know, like six, 7,000 students, um, it's a much more automated system, right? So with, with us though, it's not like press one to talk to this person, press two to talk to this person. It's just someone navigating the system with you. Um, and whether you go to U of S or here, um, but especially at St. Pete's, uh, you will get the opportunity to study with people who are studying a bunch of different majors actually. So people find that really beneficial because again, it just helps them cement their, their choice about what they wanna do um, and make new friends. Um, what we do find with St. Peter's College is that our students do have a very low drop uh, rate, especially when we compare it to the provincial average, um, which again, makes sense. You know, it, smaller class sizes, uh, it costs less money and there's more financial aid and there's someone helping you out. Yeah, you're, you're probably gonna be more likely to graduate for sure. Um, and we do offer 70 plus different uh, programs of, uh, for first year here. I'll come back to this in one second. Uh, so we do have an open house. It's coming up next Saturday, the 21st. Um, it is an in-person one. We are following all the COVID guidelines. Um, so registration is very limited. Registration is very much first come, first serve. Once we reach the capacity limit, that's it. So if you are interested in seeing the college for yourself, you know, seeing why students succeed here, seeing our, like, honestly, the nicest campus in the province, um, you will want to register for that right away. You can, you can find that just by going to our website, sdpeterscollege.ca. Uh, there should be a button right at the front that says open house. Click on that. You'll be able to register right there. Um, if you do want to learn more information about St. Peter's College, uh, you can do so by following our Facebook. We have an Instagram. We have a Twitter. You can phone us. You can email us. You can go to our website. We also have a YouTube. Um, you'll get to learn a lot more. If you want to, really want to learn more about St. Peter's College, look up our YouTube channel. Just put in St. Peter's College Munster on YouTube. You'll, you'll see it pop up. Um, if you guys have any questions, you know, feel free to get, in, get, get a hold of us, get in touch with us. We'd be happy to help out. Arts and science specifically is really big. I'm sorry I wasn't able to go into super, uh, a lot of super big details here. I just can't do that for like 70 plus different programs. But if you do have a question about a program or like wanna learn more about like psychology or like chemistry or this or that, like whatever it is, just get in contact with us. We'd be happy to give you those, uh, those details and the specifics that you need. Um, if you don't have any questions though, uh, I'll, be, I'll be monitoring the chat here for a second. Thanks for attending our session. We're really thankful that you were able to come for it. If you have any questions, let us know.